Okay, so welcome everyone to the uh, June edition of the Uni Community Hours. We have a lot of topics today, so let's get right into it. First of all, as always, the agenda. I'm going to very briefly present what's new in Uni 2022-06, very briefly, because during the last community hours in May, we already presented pretty much everything. Then I will talk very briefly as well about the Hack Week 2021. 20, uh, we will welcome Santosh. Uh, and then Michele uh, Busolotto will talk about the migrations to OpenSUSE Elite 15.4 and PostgreSQL news, uh, because this is something big for Unit 2006. Pablo will present the bug fix for the HTTP proxies, proxy issues with Reposync. And Victor will present the news about SALT 3004. And as always, at the end, we will have a, our usual session of questions and answers. But also, as always, if you want to ask anything, then feel free to interrupt us. Very well. So new things in UNI 2022-06. Well, first of everything, we already announced this in the last session. This is a major upgrade. The base operating system is going to change for the server and the proxy from OpenSUSE lib 15.3 to OpenSUSE lib 15.4. That means that you need to follow the major upgrade procedure and that you need to update the server before you update the proxy or the clients. This is everything at the release notes. So be sure you check them and be sure you follow the major upgrade procedure, not the minor one. So. In short, this time it's not enough if you stop this for, for the server, for example, it's not enough if you stop the services and run zipper up. There is something else you will need to do and Michele will present it later. Then we are uh, finally deprecation the traditional client tools. So 22.06 is the last release that is going to support the client tools. It's time to migrate already your clients to SALT if you didn't do already. Um, if I recall correctly, we told about this during the 2021-12 presentation. And please do not onboard new traditional clients. So this release will still work with traditional clients. The next one will not support them anymore. Maybe they will still work for a couple of months more, for a couple of releases more, but as we announced in December, we will start removing the code for the traditional client tools during December. Also remember that now you have all the things that traditional could do are now possible with SALT as well, and you have also the SALT bundle that Victor will talk about later. So things I already mentioned, and besides that, we have new products. Of course, you will be able to sync and manage OpenSUSE Lib 15.4, the whole family for SUSE Linux Enterprise 15 SP4, and finally, SD Micro 5.2. So, well, since I guess someone, maybe Donald, if he's connected, is going to ask when we are going to release 2022-06, most likely this will happen on Monday. Thanks to Stefan Bloom. I saw him connected here. Thank you very much because he allowed us to finally fix the problems we had building the L8 client tools. It seems that caused by some kind of misconfiguration at the build service, but that is still to be clarified. In any case, the good thing is that everything is building now and we will be able to publish it on Monday. So any questions about this? You already answered mine. I won't have to ask you. <laughs> but maybe you have more, so go ahead. <laughs> no, I, I think this is good. Um, so this is going to be rolled into uh, the migration is going to be a, a one step or a multi step to get to 2206 since we have to change OS. Well, um, Michele will present it later, but basically it's, as the it's the same as the last time. There will be a server migrator script that you need to run. Then you do the, perform the, the PostgreSQL update, well, or the database update. 
you reboot and then the server will be on 2022.06 already with lib 15.04 as base operating system. Sweet. Okay. I will test it next week. You can bet on that. <laughs> sure. And I hope everything will work because Michele was working very hard to get this, this ready. Okay, so if we don't have more questions about 2206, then Hack Week 21st. For those of you that don't know, the Hack Week is a week each year where the SUS employees can work on, let's say, pretty much everything related to open source. It doesn't need to be related to their main work at, at SUSE. Uh, in the case of some of the SUSE manager developers, we are, we are also contributors to Uni, of course. What we decide is to work on some things for Uni, things that we don't have usually time for. So I can tell you that in my case, I'm going to see what I can do about Uni, uh, sorry, about Ubuntu 2020.04. There is a member of the community that already contributed with a pull request, but I still need to do all the testing because it could be that we are missing some more changes for the for the server. I know that Pablo prepared a pull request for the repo sync. I think it's not merged yet, but I will need to test if that is complete or if something else is missing. And other than that, I will, I will be... I yeah. just want to interrupt just a bit on that because I'm I'm actually at Open Source Summit in in Austin, Texas, US, and I just had conversation with the canonical people about 2204 and about <coughs> about Uni slash SUSE manager integration, and they're passing on um, some contact people's at canonical that will have more information about their oval and things like that for 2204. So, mm -hmm. so get with me, I, I've got some names for you. <laughs> okay, great. Then yeah, pass me the information. I will I will use this for the hack week. So yeah, and other than that, if time allows, I will start having a look at Alma Linux 9. I already have some information about what changed, what not, but I still didn't try to, uh, to do any real implementation. To be honest, I expect that I will not be able to complete Alma Linux 9 because I think I will need some help from the Java people and I'm not sure if they will be available about CLM, but we will see how things are going on. And um, Raul Osuna from support, from SUSE support, will be also working with me on this and he will be trying to implement the support for Open Euler, which is uh, a Chinese, um, you, you could call it CentOS clone, more or less. So that's for us, but this is not restricted to SUS employees. If anyone from the community wants to participate, please have a look at the Hack Week site. And if you want to help us with something for uni, feel free to do so. And this week is going to be a very good opportunity for you because we will have people from SUSE manager and from uni regular contributors working there and able to show you what needs to be done, for example, if you want to add a new operating system. So join us. Also remember that this, this is also not restricted to developers. There are a lot of different things you can contribute to open source and it does not need to be code. You can do translations, you can do documentation, you can do web design, graphic design, you can help with legal stuff if you if you want, filling bugs, testing things. There are a lot of different things to do. And again, you don't really need to be a developer. So, well, I didn't tell about the dates because they are on screen, but it's next week. Okay, any questions about this section? If not, then the last section for me is to give a very warm welcome to Santosh, who is going to be the Google Summer Summer of Code student working with us. And he's going to take care of converting the system list pages to React. And if I saw correctly, I think he's connected to this call. So maybe you can say a few words about yourself. Uh, yeah, thank you, sir. Uh... 
I just joined a uh, few minutes back and was seeing and uh, I came to know that it was such a very good community. And uh, uh, yeah, um, I'm the GSOC student uh, who's going to take care of converting the existing JSP pages to React. Uh, yeah, mm, and thanks for giving me a Warm welcome. Uh, I guess you all can hear me, right? Yes, Hello? we can hear you. No problem. Uh, yeah, uh, and uh, I don't have much experience on uh, open source development, and this is my first uh, direct hands-on project inside uh, open source project. So. Um, uh, uh, just I, I just want to uh, give a small introduction on uh, how I got introduced into open source. So uh, there was this uh, Udacity Cloud Native uh, course which I actually applied to, uh, which is actually a scholarship course, uh, which I applied to and I got uh, selected. It was actually sponsored by SUSA. Uh, so that's where I just uh, got introduced to SUSA. Uh, even before I was just using Linux based OS and I was like using some open source software like everyone. Uh, but uh, I was uh, much exposed to open source. Uh, what is the power of open source and what a open source could do and who can contribute and uh, I was not having that much of an idea. And then slowly there was this uh, Actually, uh, uh, SUSA community, SUSA and Rancher community, they, they actually gave us a link to join. And there I actually joined and there were like sessions. Uh, there were these amazing people who actually introduced to containers, uh, Uyuni, uh, Rancher, and Kubernetes, and many more. They were like classes and I was just attending and uh, I really enjoyed those. Uh, and then that was my introdu introduction to open source and that's when uh, I found that open source community is not like something only legends can participate and uh, they can only contribute their code and you should have some qualification to contribute your code. Uh, not like that. I really like that part and uh, uh, yeah, maybe uh, I just tried, maybe we, uh, can we try uh, getting into open source because I love their community and uh, I love how open source works. Uh, and then I just took, also took a course from uh, same, uh, from Linux actually, uh, that was actually uh, based uh, on some open source uh, licensing and something like uh, a, pro a course on like uh, to know more about open source projects and how it works and something like that. And I just took that and completed and came to know that uh, came uh, I actually came to know many things from that course about open source. And uh, I really loved how uh, open source project and people in an open source actually work. work. Actually, uh, uh, People who work at open source actually mostly don't work only at uh, the open source project. They actually do it as a, like their hobby thing. They they don't they actually don't actually they don't actually have to work on that. They just have uh, they just have a passion for that project and they are working for that. And uh, and the product developed as uh, um, as a end product of passion would definitely be good and uh, it would definitely help many people. Uh, that's all. Uh, that was my basic understanding about open source and just uh, I thought maybe this is my place. This is where uh, I could use my talent and I, sh I should give my uh, I should give my talent and I should do things. That is what I thought and uh, and I was uh, thinking of how to get uh, how to get started into an open source project and uh, getting an exposure to it like uh, in an organized manner and came to know that uh, there was these many many like uh, 
mentorship things like uh, gsoc uh, something from linux and uh, so i was just uh, exploring this and gsoc was having a much large project uh, uh, sources so i was just thinking maybe uh, so uh, i explored a, from op- maybe uh, open source was the first first open source uh, organization which i known about so maybe i thought Uh, i could start from uh, open source so i just contacted few people from open source through mail uh, and uh, yeah um, that's when i contacted uh, cedric sir uh, who is actually mentor of my project mm. yeah cedric uh, sadly could not uh, make it in time today but uh, yeah he yeah, introduced no you al- okay. already So yeah, well, what I can say is that we are looking forward for your contributions. You will find that the Uni community and Susemaner itself they are very welcoming communities, and I'm sure you are going to have a yeah a lot of fun with us because that's also important in in open source. So again, welcome and enjoy your time with us. And of course, if you want to already start hacking something during the hack week, I think Zedric will be available as well. So, I will. Yes, sir, definitely I'll do. I'll try my best to just do something in the hack week. So yeah, just I think I dragged much of your time. Uh, to end with, yeah, uh, uh, I just think open source is my place where I can show my talent and uh, give my talent and. Uh, uh just as i think it is my place to shine uh, so i think i never go from open source communities and uh, i think i'll definitely do something great job to uni mm-hmm. uh, maybe yeah, after the, to other projects too mm-hmm. to i'm start sure with. i'm sure you will so welcome again and Yeah, we are running Thanks. a little bit of time, so sorry, sorry, sorry. I was just uh, over enthusiastic and just. No, oh, but that's that's to... that's good because in the end, open source is all about enthusiasm, and uh, even if you are working on open source, it's not something you do for for fun. That is also important, and uh, yeah, as we always say here in Suse, it's important to have some happy hacking and enjoy a lit a lot of. your work yes, so thank, thank you so much welcome so uh, we have a couple of minutes if you have some questions about any of the sections otherwise i will pass the mic to i think michael is the next one presenting the um the updates to open society 15.4 anu uni right michael right here i am So oh, let me yeah. share yeah. my screen. Hopefully you can see something. Yeah, it's working. Okay, great, great, thanks. So yeah, as already explained by by Julio, I'm going to present this uh, this upgrade. So from Unix 16, from Uni 2022-06, and uh, yeah, as already said, uh, this is a major upgrade. So in in this scenario, yeah. Uh, It's not just a uh, unit that is going uh, going to be upgraded, uh, but also the operating system. So you will have uh, the OpenSUSE Lib 15.4, the source version, uh, and also the uh, this Postgres version that uh, it will be the the 14 uh, from the 14. The 14 is the is the default one uh, on the OpenSUSE Lib uh, 15.4. So as you can see, all all I'm going to present uh, it's very well documented, of course. Uh, so yes, just reminder uh, to. to have a look at the at the major upgrade part so here you can find the several major major upgrade part for the proxy here you can find the, the same for the uh, sorry for the server this one this one is for the proxy but uh, another important section that can solve a lot of problems that you can find this is here troubleshooting there is some strange scenario that can happen so yeah if you have uh, any problem you can also have a look at this part so moving forward uh, Okay, the first step for for migrating the the server is uh, refresh your repository and update the SUSE manager package. 
this because the this package contains the uh, the 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 scripted tab we are going to call now that is the server migrator dot sh when you run it uh, this this um, the script uh, will uh, uh, backup your previous be, your previous repository it will uh, um, set up the new ones uh, and uh, install all the new things regarding the operating system and the uni and the uni server after that, so you will have, uh, if you also check in uh, OS release, you will have uh, lip, lip 15.4, you will have all the new packages. So the next step is running this other script, uh, pg migrated uh, xyz.sh. And uh, the purpose of this script is to migrate uh, all the data. So before you, before you run this, 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 this script, uh, you will have installed in your system Postgres 14. But of course, uh, the data are not in there. So what the, the, the action that this script does uh, are stopping, stop your spacewalk service, uh, shut down the, the database, uh, check uh, if uh, the new version of Postgres is actually installed, and then uh, starting the migration, uh, create all the, the configuration file, uh, and take care of everything. Uh, if everything goes wrong, uh, you will find your backup uh, in the Varli PG SQL uh, data PG 13 uh, folder. And uh, yeah, it might happen that uh, you are uh, tight of uh, space in your disk. Uh, so if you are brave enough, uh, you don't want the backup, uh, you can also use the uh, minus F option so for doing the migration without the, the backup. After that, uh, all the packages are done, uh, all the um, uh, the database it's it's set uh, so you can just reboot uh, and everything it it will be fine by by from from here. Okay, regarding the the proxy, also in this case it's uh, it's the major upgrade. Uh, the procedure is slightly different. So first of all, uh, you should uh, um, you should check you should uh, take the uh, the common channel for OpenSUSE Leap 15.4. Uh, if you see here, uh, mm, there is a problem currently in the documentation that uh, it will be solved soon, uh, but uh, currently the documentation report that uh, the uh, uni client should be um, subscribed by the proxy, actually it's not. So here you can find that it's uh, uh, cancelled uh, and uh, is up, uh, also the documentation will be fine. So first, uh, uh, first action is to um, take this uh, special common channel uh, and uh, repo sync uh, all this channel. So at this stage, uh, you will have uh, all the new package for OpenSUSE lib 3.4 and the proxy. So your proxy should, should uh, your proxy should uh, subscribe this channel. Uh, then you can message to your proxy, stop the spacewalk, uh, sp uh, the spacewalk proxy uh, service uh, running the. Uh, zipper load up uh, allow vendor changes uh, so all the package uh, will be upgraded uh, and then after that after that uh, you can just restart the proxy and uh, everything uh, will be fine in this case so that's all for me i don't know if there is any question so during the transition the uh, the 2205 proxy will still work with 20, 2206 until you've transitioned it, right? Yeah, yeah, during the transition until uh, it, will, uh, it will work. So, but uh, yeah, it's, it, we, we, we are not meant to have uh, a, um, a, a different ver version between several proxies. So everything is fine during the transition, the transition. But uh, yeah, as soon as you upgrade the server, you should also upgrade the, the proxies as well. Right, server first and then proxies, right? Exactly. And clients, remember this is important because of course in the end you are going to end up updating the salt master version on the server to 3004. Uh, so if you do the clients and the proxy first, it means that the minion on the clients and the proxy will be, it's going to be newer than and newer. Yeah. And that is bad, bad. Don't do that. <laughs> exactly. It could work. Maybe it will work, but it's completely unsupported and not just by Uni, but by Saltstack itself. I linked that at the release notes. They have a very, very serious warning about not doing that. Right. 
Yeah, and I I think it's best practice too. And I I try to encourage people. I just had somebody poke me with a problem with this. That if you <clears throat> if you start if you don't upgrade the the infrastructure of server and proxy first, you will probably encounter issues. And and what is to stop you from upgrading the infrastructure first? It's not going to be third party applications. We already know that this the processes that Michaela outlined are going to work and they're not threatening your your uni infrastructure so please upgrade the infrastructure parts first and then do the clients because having a newer salt on the client never a good thing um just hello uh, philip here speaking um just a quick questions uh not sure what i have understand the uh, thing regarding the uni client channel uh, so means that we don't have to present the Uyuni client repository on the proxy, or what? What exactly is the, is the issue here? Correct. Yeah. Uh, currently, the documentation report that the client tools uh, should be uh, subscribed. The, the proxy should subscribe the the client tools, uh, but uh, yeah, actually it's it's uh, it's not uh, so yeah currently the documentation it's uh, have this this problem but uh, yeah it will uh, it will be fixed soon uh, so in the meanwhile uh, if you are going to upgrade uh, just remind uh, these things but you mean that the uni uni client tool repository should not be presented on the proxies yes yeah, so that's generally yeah. correct okay. yeah that's right and the reason is that it's not happening right now, as far as I know, but we had in the past problems where packages from the uni client tools could conflict with things we have on the server. So yeah, that was something that was wrong on the documentation and it will be already fixed for 2020-06. Okay, because I think that in my infrastructure, uh, I have the uni client tools repository presented on the uni proxies. Okay. Yeah, um, for now, as I told, I think it's working. It's not causing any problems, but it could at any moment. So now with the migration to 15.4 and 2020.206, the documentation will not tell you to have that repository anymore. Oh, but only on the proxy. Only on the proxy, yeah. Correct. Because the, the salt elements are coming from the proxy channel, right? No, not really. Remember that soul comes from. Oh, yeah, they're itself. integrated with the OS. Yeah. Okay. Got it. Oh, okay. Okay. Understood. Thank you. The the one exception to that is, uh, and and we're exploring and listening uh, to customers who want to do this. I we've I've had some. Uh, people who wanted to also make the proxy server run uh, Prometheus and Grafana, and those packages are in fact in the tools channel. So, you know, there may be some use cases that you find where uh, you need something from that. Uh, please let us know your experience uh, in that regard. And um, so the the the, the um, bundled salt uh, salt minion uh, used by the Uyuni proxies is on another repository, not on the Uyuni client tool repository anymore. Right, it's part of the operating. Well, it's always been part of the operating system. Salt minion has been a part of of Leap. No, no, wait. Uh, hold yeah, on. It's uh, the bundle one. Yeah. Exactly. So the bundle uh, th that does and not come bundle. from from uh, OpenSUSE that comes from the proxy repository itself. We have it there. Right. Ah, OK. OK, but it will be something specific to the proxy. I mean, the bundle salt clients uh, from on, on the proxy will be different from the ones installed on the salt client, unique client, I mean. 
Wow, it's the same the package. package, just delivered in a different channel. Exactly, yes. Ah, but the same package, but on a different channel. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Any other questions or otherwise, I think the next presentation is Pablo with the fix for the usage of HTTP proxies, right? Yes, I think so. So let me share the screen. Okay. And now I, I hope that you can you can see the, the, the slides. Yeah, it works. Okay. So yeah, thank you. Uh, yeah, welcome everyone. Uh, today I want to um, give you some notes around some of the HTTP proxies issues that, that we have been uh, running uh, uh, yeah, since the last few uh, unit release uh, for reposting. So, well, uh, let me just go ahead with this. Yeah, good. So uh, the symptoms for this kind of issues are basically the following. So you have an HTTP proxy configured in your unit, uh, you, uh, and, and then you are expecting that all HTTP traffic is going over this proxy, but then you run a spacewalk reposing, and for some of the, of the repositories, you see that uh, this is not working as expected. So you see that the HTTP proxy is correctly set on the admin page, from the web UI, you see that the HTTP proxy is also configured and, uh, at the expected uh, rhn.com file as well. So everything is in place, but the spacewalk reposing is not using that configured proxy uh, for fetching metadata and downloading some of the packages. We got some reports in UUNI on the web uni, uh, uh, on GitHub, on the UUNI repository, uh, since I think it was, well, we had in the past some previous uh, problems with HTTP proxy, but yeah, since we pushed the upgrade for URL Grabber, I think it was on 2022.01 or 02, a few more issues uh, uh, appears. Um, in the end, what is happening is that um, there was a problem on URL Grabber. Um, when we did the update of the up to the latest version of URL Grabber, this contains some some logic problems on the find proxy method, uh, which is what causes basically the issue uh, here. So um, it, it it happens that it or it might be that you don't face this one issue, or it might be that you do, depending uh, on the exact repository and how you are downloading. Um, but in the case of RPN, this is yeah, commonly faced. And the thing, uh, so the final bug for the, the fix for this was actually a fix for the URL Grabber package. We fixed this upstream and we are getting this uh, release into our packages. Um, we have already the submissions in place and you will get this fix uh, or these issues fixed by UUNI 2022.06 version. With some asterisks here, um, which is that part of the fix, as I mentioned, is the, the, the part of URL Grabber, beside of some other fixes for the, the Unicode base. But the URL Grabber package is provided by lib channel. So it might be that it takes some more days into, uh, yeah, you know, to arrive into your server as it needs to be released by, uh, by lib first. But, uh, the idea is that after this is in place, then HTTP proxies that you have configured should work, and also for mirror list and basically all different RPM based repositories that you have configured. If you find more issues, yeah, that should be something different. And of course, we will need a report. But for now, and by the way, thank you very much to Dominic, to Bombelix. Um, he was also. Uh, uh, investing and researching here how, the, how how to fix this issue and provide very good uh, yeah, notes that was really worth for, for solving the situation here. So, yeah, also wanted to point it that. Yeah. Thank so you, that, Pablo, and thank you for taking care. This was really painful the last month and we're looking forward that it gets fixed. That's really <laughs> great. Thank you. No problem. Welcome. Thank you, Dominic. 
Okay, so that was it. If you have any questions around this, um, yeah, please go ahead. Yeah, so I put one in the chat. Does it do anything with the settings in Etsy sysconfig proxy? Well, the thing is that actually in one of the, you know, the, during the discussion on these um, Ujuni issues around this thing, there were people that were able to 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 work around the situation, but simply configuring configuring um, the HTTP proxy proxy outside of the Zuma, so as an HTTP proxy for the entire system, then this works. But that was not the way. So you should only configure the HTTP proxy um, via your SUSE manager server, and that should be it. So everything SUSE manager related should go over the proxy. Of course, if your SUSE manager server has a, a global HTTP server config, HTTP proxy configured for the whole system outside of SUMA, that proxy should work as well, of course, but that's not the way we are supposed to configure the HTTP proxy. Just a short addition from my side. There's a bug uh, also related to HTTP proxy in case of using the uh, basic authentication for proxy itself and the additionally authentic basic authentication for the repo. And in this case, it could be a kind of mess in the uh, usernames and passwords and yeah, the fixes upcoming. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you for the note, Victor. Yeah. All right. If there is nothing else, I would say that's it. So, yep, thank you. Um, yeah, yeah, thank you very Victor much for fixed. for the fix. And yeah, you are right. Go ahead, Victor. Solve yeah, 2004. Let, let me share the screen first. I hope you should see it. Works. Yes. I see the first slide. Yeah, great. Uh, Hi, my name is Victor, and I'm going to tell you about uh, some new changes in the latest Salt 3004. Before we have uh, Salt 3002, and now we are bumping the version and updating uh, with the upstream Salt 3004. And uh, we also have some extra changes on top of it. And uh, first of all, let me show some. Um, some important points from the changes from upstream. Uh, it's the uh, version 3004, as I mentioned. It's called Silicon. Uh, on the first link, you can follow, you can find the uh, official release notes, and I also recommend you to take a, take a look on the second URL to do, to get some additional information and uh, some extra explanations. What are the changes about? And uh, major highlights is uh, Delta proxy implementation. It's actually the um, kind of proxy to. Um, to manage different kind of uh, uh, clients behind this proxy, it's not actually the uh, what we are calling the proxy in case of using the Uyuni, and yeah, it's different, and we are not actually using these de Delta proxies in the Uyuni, and. Uh, one of the important points is the changes and refactoring of laser loader. Uh, we also have some extra fixes on top of of these fixes, uh, which mostly affects the salt session handling. And a uh, very important point is the full dropping of the uh, Python 2 support. It's dropped completely from uh, this version of uh, salt. And also it adds the support for Python 2.10 and uh, also fixes the mem possible memory leaks and I think it's more le less related to lazy load also. And um, what are the changes with the salt bundle 2004? Actually, we are also using the same version as uh, for classic minion package. It's 2004, as I mentioned, and the same fixes on top of it as we made for classic package. And it's running on Python 3.10 and which is included to the bundle package. Before we using the uh, Python 3.9 and with the new version, as uh, Hulu mentioned, and uh, uh, documentation also, it's uh, 
it's important to up upgrade the servers and proxies first and then go to the clients and actually I, I've checked the usage of the uh, of the bundle 3002.2 with the I mean the bundle 3004 with the uh, master 3002.2 and didn't notice any issues but it's possible so be aware of it and um, on top of the uh, original Python, we also have some extra fixes to make it possible to work with the older OpenSSL version than 1.1.1, as uh, the support of this OpenSSL uh, lower versions of OpenSSL was dropped from Python 3.10, but uh, more, there are a lot of clients still have uh, open a cell older than this version and that's why we have to uh, include additional uh, patch to make it possible for Python to work with the older open a cell. And, uh, as the previous version it contains about 30 Python modules and also include the PIP which was not included to previous version of the model and uh, what is the changes uh, related to the uh, uh, SALT SSH? As uh, open SUSE leap 15.4 is dropping Python 2 support, uh, it was removed. That's why uh, Python 6, Python 7 compat SALT packages were removed from the uh, UNI also and uh, not available anymore. So we can't use extra uh, SALT code bases to manage the clients with the uh, with this code basis on the on the client side, and uh, we also uh, drop in the usage of Saltin. In this case, Saltin it, it's the actually trouble delivering the salt code base to the clients, and we now using the bundle instead on the clients to handle the uh, salt SSH actions on the clients. In this case, we are not installing the package itself on the client, but only extracting the content of this package to the temp directory and then we running the actions with the with this deployed uh, salt code base and python uh, bundle by python also so and now the uh, salt ssh uh, clients is not uh, dependent on uh, platform python on the client side anymore so it's a kind of improvement and uh, it also make it possible to uh, properly handle all the uh, requests and also modules uh, relevant for the architecture and uh, version of the ROS. So uh, my, uh, one of the important things here is that SALT SSH should be able to reach the uh, bootstrap repository as uh, it's used as the source of the SALT bundle package uh, for the SALT SSH clients in this case. Please uh, be careful with it and uh, create the bootstrap repos before trying to bootstrap the SALT SSH systems in this case. Uh, so switching uh, SALT SSH uh, to SALT bundle is also possible with using the uh, reactivation key. You can uh, reactivate the existing SALT SSH system as the as the proper minion using the SALT bundle. In this case, you need to create the uh, reactivation key and then use it in the bootstrap uh, page of web UI and bootstrap the uh, in this case, not bootstrap, but to activate the system as the proper minion. And uh, you can also use the uh, bootstrap script for this purpose. Uh, it, it, mostly it's the case when you have to stay with SALT SSH as have some limitation with using the proper SALT minion with these systems uh, due possible, probably due to uh, necessity to have the uh, salt minion to be connected to the other uh, solutions or so third party uh, solutions using the salt in this case or, or any kind of independence incompatibility with the python models which can affect the uh, salt minion 
So the uh, switching uh, for from classic minion to salt bundle is also possible. It's much easier. You can just apply the state specified on the uh, slide. It's util.mjr switch to venth minion. And uh, it's better to do it in two steps. First step is just uh, copies uh, all the configuration to the bundle and installing the bundle before this copying. And bringing up the bundle instead of the minion and also turn off the uh, salt minion service in this case. And the second step uh, can also push the uh, configuration and all other salt related uh, files for from original classic salt minion and uh, also remove the salt minion itself from the system. And you can find additional uh, information in the documentation uh, on the link below. And I think that's it right now. Questions? too silent <laughs> we can still hear you <laughs> well uh, i think you did a mention maybe i'm wrong that for now we will still keep the classic package not just the bundle for the operating systems that already had it but we are having only the bundle for the new operating systems that we added lately as of today that means only Debian 11. Debian 11 only has the salt, uh, the salt bundle. It doesn't have the classic, let's call it that way, package because the version that Debian shipped was already newer and was causing troubles with with all salt master back in the day. And when we add support for Ubuntu 22.04 and Alma Linux 9 and all the Red Hat 9 clones they will get only the salt bundle but the salt bundle is able to perform exactly all the things you can do with a classic package and uh, well in the end as, as it was explained several times it's even better because it means that we can ship newer salt versions to operating systems regardless of the python that is available there totally correct and you're right i forget to mention it <laughs> and extra point that we are trying to reduce the number of the salt, uh, different salt versions where we should take care about and, <laughs> and mostly follow with the most fresher version of salt. Yeah, exactly. That That's a very good point in, indeed, because otherwise it, for, it forced us, until now it's forcing us to still keep salt 3000 alive for SD12 and CentOS and CentOS 7. And of course, if you still decide to all the old packages for the C12 for CentOS 7 or Oracle 7 or whatever, you can do it, but you will not get the latest and coolest things from Salt 3004 Silicon. So the recommendation is that you migrate all the minions you have to the bundle. And we have a two-step uh, server-based salt uh, instructions in the documentation on how to do that. Yeah, it's basically what uh, Victor just uh, explained. It's in it's in the documentation. Yes. In fact, well, remember that if you want to bootstrap the the minions with the classic package by default, that is not possible anymore. You need to change the configuration but we strongly recommend you don't do that yeah and there is also the recommendation uh how to enforce let's say uh, using the bundle especially for the system which already has the salt minion configured for different purposes than uh, uni Very well, if we don't have more questions about Sold 3004, we still have more or less 10 minutes for any other questions, requests, or discussions you may want to have in general about Uyuni. So go ahead, don't be shy. If something is on your mind, just tell. Do we have a, a date 
when we plan to support. I know you, you said you were working on it in Hack Week, but Ubuntu 2204 and uh, the Alma Rocky 9 versions. Well, uh, let's say that this is not an official answer, but I would say that the idea is having 2004, maybe by the end of the, of the summer. It depends on how many problems we will find out. Um, it's harder to say anything about Rocky Linux 9, Alma Linux 9, etc., because it is still unknown how many internal changes Red Hat decided to do at the modules and upstream and all those fancy things. For now, I already detected during the initial research that the YAML that the repository for upstream should uh, used to have it's not present anymore, at least on Alma Linux 9. Now, I don't know if that is suspected or maybe it's because there, there would be nothing on the YAML, but the file is not there already. Uh, so, Julio, are you talking about the module streams right now? Yes. The YAML for the module streams? Yeah. Because there aren't any module streams up uh, to now for uh, RHEL or EL9 up to now. These will only come later, like uh, for 9.1. Yeah, and that is what worries me because I'm not sure if all the CLM and repositing will work fine if the yeah. file is not there at all. Yeah. I mean, if it would be empty, most likely yes, or maybe not, but that's something we need to check. And of course, there is that, let's call it surprise, but there could be some other things. What I can tell you is that they did an, an initial research like one month ago, and from a user point of view, I didn't see big differences on Alma Linux 9 or Red Hat 9. Yeah. But of course, managing it with the uni could be uh, something a little bit different. So yeah. right now, um, if you add uh, an AppStream repo for uh, EL9 to uni, it should actually uh, look like B8BaseOS, so just without any AppStreams. Mm -hmm. So I think it will be fine. Yeah. Um, and about the bundle, uh, salt bundle and to, uh, Ubuntu 22. For the package is ready, uh, but one of the problems that uh, there are some issues on uh, synchronization of the repos for Ubuntu 22.04, as Julio mentioned, I think on the at the beginning of the call. Yeah, that's right. That's because let me see if I recall correctly. I think that the content inside the dev files it's not compressed anymore. With yeah, the they, I don't remember. They, now yet they're that. using different uh, compression yep. methods. The same thing is also happening for EL9. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, well, oh, yeah, well, at least. So, I, I would have uh, a question about uh, are there any plans to uh, improve the implementation for app streams in the future? <laughs> Because I don't uh, know if you saw it, I, I expressed some, uh, um, yeah. I wasn't that happy up to now how it worked with, with the with pulling out all the AppStream data and it basically breaks AppStream and uh, it makes it impossible to change the, the streams. Um, on the system without changing back to the, the base repos. So it's just a question about uh, if there are already already any plans to improve on that, like when uh, it creates the, um, the, the CLs, uh, if it just creates a, a module stream YAML file with only the module streams uh, which are present. I'm not sure if we have something in the backlog about it. Do you know, Jan, since you're here, or maybe Abit? No, we don't. We don't. Yeah, uh, Red Hat created this mess. Uh... Yeah, it's here to stay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So for now, we don't have anything. Uh... Okay. Yeah, maybe a, a, a thought for the future and uh, to set that on the, the backlog. <laughs> Yeah, so so thanks for the feedback. Really appreciate it. 
Well, how would you like SUSE manager to deal with the app streams or Uyuni? What do you think would be an appropriate way for us to handle it? So the, the most appropriate way would be to, to, um, to uh, get um, module stream agnostic, but uh, in the current state, I don't see that, that uh, being that easily possible. So the, the easiest way to Im all, uh, improve all of that would be to um, generate a, a module stream YAML file with only the module streams which are in the, the mod uh, in the CL then because then the OS will know which modules are activated and you don't activate the, the module anymore uh, in the base and uh, after you switch to the CL and it just doesn't know uh, where it stays anymore. Well, actually, that mean that would mean for us to uh, somehow make the package operations in Suma recognize modules. That was the f um, first reason that we had to strip all this modular metadata anyway. So yeah. uh, that could be done, but that would be a lot of work. I mean, the whole of Suma needs to recognize modules, and it's and since we don't have any SUSE products that has modules. Yeah. Um, so far, that ha w wasn't feasible for us. But yeah, of course, that, that's an option. And uh, once we do that, if we do that, then we don't even have to use the modular repositories through CLM. That can still be done. But also, yeah, uh, generating custom um, metadata files would be, would be the easiest part after that. Yeah, uh, um, I wasn't talking about fully getting it agnostic. It's more like um, that the CL creator gets a an, an function uh, where it takes the YAML file, strips out um, uh, via a filter the, the, the ones which are... So you, you have to set up the filters if you want to use the CL and that it just takes the, the input YAML file strips out the, the, the streams which are um, which are present in the CL and then creates a new YAML file of that. That's why I, what, I was, what I was thinking about would be the easiest way to get further there. Okay, yeah, that in that case, that that's, is doable. Yeah, that, that shouldn't be a problem. I mean, as long as, well, in the generated metadata, there will be only one stream per module, but yeah. I guess that would be acceptable, yes. Yeah, and that this will then improve the, the experience on the client side because there is actually a module data. Yeah. Yeah, it's just a consideration for the future, maybe. This is interesting. Maybe you should create a, a uni issue for that. There is a template, if I recall correctly, yeah. for requests for new stuff. And then, well, someone from the community can step in or otherwise we can see if we can incorporate it into the backlog at, at some point. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Yes, I, I agree. That's a great idea actually because currently on the client side we have to override some fail-safe mechanisms for these modules yes. and this is not so pleasant for the client side. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so if we don't have any other questions, we are just in time for the end of the meeting because it's already five Central European summer time, of course. So, well, thank you very much everyone for attending, presenting, sending your questions, your suggestions. Remember again, Hack Week the next week, the next week uh, we will be at the Hack Week channel at uh, Gitter doing stuff. Remember that you are always welcome to contribute. Have a lot of fun with the upcoming 2022 uh, 06 release and please send us your feedback, whatever is something is rocking or everything is going very well. And I hope to see you within one, one month uh, in the end of July. So for now, enjoy the, your weekend. Thanks and see you soon again. Bye-bye. Thank, Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye.